This video playlist is going to go over sample test two for Math 127 trigonometry. And here's the first one, uh, 1A. First couple problems on this test, you're going to have to do establish the identity. So establish the identity, we talked about that in the lecture as far as what strategies you want to look for when you do these problems. Strategies include change everything to sines and cosines, get common denominators, factoring, multiply one side by a conjugate. So when you look at these kind of problems, you want to be thinking about what strategy we're going to use to start out with. Now everything is already written in terms of sines and cosines, so the next strategy we're going to go to is getting common denominators because we see we have two fractions here. So that's what we're going to start with. We want to get common denominators with these here, and they, the common denominator will be sine x times 1 plus cosine. So we're going to multiply each fraction by what it's missing. So we'll start with cosine x minus 1 over sine. This one has the sine, but we need to multiply top and bottom by 1 plus cosine x. So we've got that first part uh, we're doing. The second one, the second one has the 1 plus cosine, but it's missing the sine. So we'll multiply top and bottom by sine x. Eventually we want to see that this is going to equal zero. Next thing we want to do is put this together uh, for a single denominator now that we, we've multiplied, uh, put, set, it, set up the multiplication. We're going to have sine x and then 1 plus cosine x on the bottom. On the top, we're going to multiply this through. Now the bottom, I don't want to multiply that through because a lot of times when you have something on the bottom, it's going to cancel and you'll be able to cancel something out in a later step. So usually the bottom one, your common denominator, you want to keep that in the factored form. But the top ones, you definitely want to expand those. So when we do this, we're going to get cosine x times 1. So we get cosine x. And then we get cosine squared. And then I have minus 1. And then minus cosine x. And that takes care of the first one. Now the second one, I have a plus that's here. And then I have sine squared x. Get on and make that equal zero. I want to look for things I can combine together like terms. So once I have this complete, it's all over one fraction. Cosine and negative cosine, those are going to cancel. And then I, uh, I can rearrange this and so uh, because of limited space here, I'm going to go ahead and write that next step above it here. Okay, so hopefully you have all that complete. Okay, so next we're going to do, I'm just going to rearrange things here. So I'm going to put uh, cosine squared x plus sine squared x minus 1. Everything else cancels out over sine x 1 plus cosine x. So I've canceled out the cosines. I've rewritten the cosine squared and sine squared together. Now once you get down to this step, if you can't go any further with it and you're not sure what to do, this is when you want to start looking at that list of identities that we had uh, in the beginning of this section where this problem comes from and look for uh, common identities you can put in. Now one that you're going to use here is the identity for cosine squared plus sine squared. If you look at your list of identities, this whole thing is equal to a 1. So when I come down to the next step here, uh, what I'll have, still got the same denominator on the bottom, this will be a 1. So uh, I'll use this in different color here. So all this circled, that all turns into a 1 uh, down below. So I'm just using the identity uh, for that one. And then because I'm using the identity, uh, these two now I can subtract and 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 over the denominator is going to be 0, so I get both sides to cancel out. So again, these type of identities, you should always get one side, both sides to be equal to each other. They're always going to start out. Eventually, you should prove that they are an identity. Uh, and so because you're establishing an identity, you should always get both sides equal. So in this case, we get 0 equals 0.